Uh, hello and welcome back to another video where we're looking at a railway related book. Um, so far in this series we've looked at a couple of um, kind of books that were kind of what I would call mass produced. So one of them's a very recent book um, and the Ivy the Engine book was you know early 80s but plenty of them around. Um, today we're looking at something very very different um, and that's this tiny little um, book. Well it's not, it's not tiny but it, it's much smaller. Um, that I picked up a few years ago on our, everybody's favourite auction site um, that is, well, a little weird, um, well, a, a little different anyway, shall we say. Um, <clears throat> so you can see the title of the book, An Incident of the Penistone Railway Accident. Um, so having lived in Penistone for a while and, and been interested in railways, when I saw this come up, came, come up on, on up for auction, um, I was really interested because I had no idea what it was about and um, a quick Google and I couldn't find much about the book. The only thing I could find was a single reference on Google Books that suggested a publication date of 1887. Um, so obviously um, this book is old, um, but it's, it's survived reasonably well. I mean, obviously the, the spine's disintegrating, but the, the, the rest of the book is actually in really good condition. Um, so there was the, the auction had very little details it had um a picture of the front cover uh, and a picture of the frontispiece engraving which i'll well, that i'll show you in a second uh, but had nothing else told me nothing else about uh, about the book um so i had no idea what the contents of this was going to be um but i decided i'd i'd, I'd put in a bid um it wasn't a cheap book but um i i won the auction um so I've had this book um, for a while now, uh, and I'm still. I mean, I have I have good ideas about it, but I, I still I am um, short of information. So, if anybody else knows anything about this book, then please do do leave comments. Um, so, what is this? Well, it's not necessarily what you think. So, I was expecting it to be uh, maybe somebody's personal recollections uh, about the about an accident in Peniston. Uh, there's been plenty of them over the years. Um, or maybe, um, I don't know, selection of newspaper articles or, or, or something along those lines. Uh, what I didn't expect was essentially a religious tract, uh, which is what this is. So it's actually a set of very short um, kind of religious notes, discussions. Um, the only one that mentions an accident is the first one in the book. Um, so if we open it up, we can see um, a bit more details. So this is this is the the, the shot um, that that was on the the auction essentially. So we've got a a picture of the sorry, being careful because it's a bit fragile. A picture of a, a train uh, saying mile after mile the train moved on, um, and then the the engraved kind of um, frontispiece which says suddenly an incident of the Peniston railway accident, and it says being number one fourth series of pleasant stories for the young. Well. It's a railway accident, so I'm not quite sure why it's in a pleasant stories book. Um, but if we if we move on, <clears throat> then what we get is this this first first short story. Oh well, short tract um, that starts with "Who would have thought, as they bade her goodbye, that on earth they would never meet again? Loved ones gathered around her at the railway station. You are not nervous?" they asked anxiously. "It is a long way to go alone." "No," she had answered cheerfully. "Why should I be?" I am in good hands, in safe keeping, and with fond farewells they parted. The train moved on, and, and mile after mile of fair verdant country was safely passed, until with an awful crash a sudden railway accident brought death and suffering in many a ghastly form among the passengers. In a moment it was all over for her of whom I write. God had kept her, but not as she expected, for he had taken her to himself. Death with his icy hand had indeed set his seal upon her forehead, but he had no terror for her, for he was but the servant that had borne her to her home. Loved ones are left behind in the great, hard, toiling struggle of life, and she taken out of it to be at rest forever with the Lord who loved her, and she is now, we may rest assured, in good and safe and tender keeping for evermore. And what if it had been you? And then it goes on to a discussion of kind of how we um how we think about life and and, 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 and um you know how we would um deal with a kind of sudden sudden death I guess um, and then we go on and we've got other little pieces that aren't necessarily um, at all related to the to the first 
the first part we then have we have other stuff, things like ready um taxi man i think sitting in his in his cab and, and all sorts of and all sorts of things so it's um yeah it, it's all kind of religious about how we how we live our life and and and, and how we prepare ourselves for for death in the case of, of the first one um so yeah so other than the word peniston here and here there is no mention of peniston and there is no discussion of the accident or the railway or anything else but um given the date and the history of railway accidents in peniston i'm fairly certain that although this book is published in 1887 it's referring to an accident that took place in 1884 um on Wednesday the 16th of July in fact in 1884 uh, so about three years as I say before before the book was published um, so there was a train um, it was a kind of joint train so it would split at, at one point um, run by the Manchester Sheffield and Lincoln Railway and the Great Northern Railway that ran from Manchester to Grimsby and London so as I say it would divide I think in, in Sheffield um, and it left Manchester at 12.30 um took the old woodhead route um between manchester and sheffield so that's out um towards kind of glossop and then up to woodhead um through the old woodhead tunnels um then down part through dunford bridge station which is the other end of the tunnel uh, and then down into into peniston um and the accident actually happened um at approximately 120 um so you know not 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 even an hour into the into the journey um as the train passed the signal box at bullhouse bridge which is on the kind of downward slope from from dunford bridge um towards peniston um it's essentially uh, certainly at the time uh, and even now it's pretty much in the middle of nowhere um there are more houses i guess have sprung up in in, in neighboring little hamlets and things so there's plenty of houses now in millhouse green which is probably the nearest uh the nearest settlement at the time bull house was essentially there. i think there was a hall and a um some kind of mine or quarry but there wasn't much 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 there particularly but there was a signal box um and the train as i say the train had left the woodhead tunnels uh was coming down the gradient um in the accident reports, the driver reckons that they were going between 45 and 50 miles an hour. Um, and um, I mean, I can, I can read from the accident report, which tells you um, what the signalman, um, Henry Baxter, um, heard and saw. So he says, I watched the train approaching, but noticed nothing unusual, either in the speed or running of the engine or train, until just as the engine was passing my box. I heard a very heavy thud as if something had been broken. I then noticed the engine began to oscillate very violently. It continued to oscillate, and when the middle of the train was about halfway between my box and the underbridge, I saw the carriages swaying to the left and then leave the rails and run down the side of the embankment. All the train went down the bank on the west side of the underbridge, except, I think, the front brake van, which rolled down the east side of the bridge, and the engine tender and horse box, which ran ahead. Um, so that's a fairly um, short, synced description um, of the accident. What actually happened was one of the cranks on the motion had broken um, and that forced the wheels on the train outwards, um, which distorted the track. Um, the violent nature broke the coupling between the horse box, which was just behind the engine, um, and the rest of the, the rest of the train. Um, and essentially the the the, the, the the engine and everything carried on along the rails, um, but the rest of the train basically went straight forward as the as the line curved. The train went straight forward, which meant it ran down the bank into the road. Uh, but as I say, unfortunately, it happened at a point where the railway was going over a bridge, um, so it was up on an embankment, and um, everything fell down into the into the road. Now, fortunately, we have um, photos, um, so I can show you and explain. Um, a little bit more so here's here's one photo um which is obviously um staged um with all the the, the men here posing for the for the cat photographer um so yeah so this is the the railway bridge um so the train was coming from this side 
uh, along the cone, along the curve uh, across the railway. It actually looks as if it's sloping down to this side, but it's not. It's going the other way. It's just the way the angle of the photo is taken. Um, but you can see you've got um, railway carriages in the field or on this side uh, and some completely smashed to um, smithereens um, sat in the road. Um, it was obviously... Um, a really bad accident I'm not gonna go I mean I do have lots and lots of details on the accident um, as I've written about it previously for um, a project called the uh, railway work life and death um, I'll put a link in the description so you can read I, I, I dug out a whole bunch of newspaper descriptions and the um, the accident report um, so there's there's lots you can read about the accident if you want to but I'll show you a, a few more photos um, I say we've got quite a few partly because I guess um, People from the railway companies probably turned up to take some, but also um, this is a, a postcard taken by uh, Joshua Biltcliffe. At the time, he had a studio in Thurlston, which is not very far away from Penniston and the accident site. Um, he moved later on, the, the studio was in the centre of Penniston. Um, so we're actually quite well served with lots of photos of the area from, from the time. So this is, again is another one. This it shows, so here's the bridge. So we've now moved on to the to the far side of the of the road um, and you can see again people you know sitting and posing on the on, on the wreckage I've not managed to identify any of these people unfortunately although a lot you know some of them definitely look like railway workers rather than just um, bystanders um, but you can see I mean the carnage is just is just ridiculous the, the you know the, the carriages were just um, completely disintegrated um, and in fact 24 people um, died in the accident either Instantly, I think there was 19 pulled dead from the wreckage. Um, five died later of, of injuries in hospital or on the way to hospital. Um, and at the time, that made it the fifth worst railway accident in the UK. Um, there was um, obviously the Tear Bridge disaster a few years earlier. It had, um, you know, at least 75 deaths. Um, there was um, a few others, um, again, that had, had that had a few more. Uh, more deaths than this but in all the other cases um there was somebody to blame essentially um the tear bridge was obviously you know it wasn't particularly well built there was there was issues with its design um one of the um one of the accidents involved a fire after a passenger train hit a uh, some wagons stopped full of paraffin which had been left on the line another one was um issues with communication between signal men allowing two trains onto um, a single line and cl collided head-on um, another one was a wheel failure which couldn't necessarily have been predicted but bad communication meant that um, the brakes were applied wrongly between the guards van at the back and the train at the front crushing some of the train and then tipping some of the train um, down an embankment into a canal um, so in all those previous cases, those previous four cases, there was somebody to blame. Um, in this case, no, the, no, the, the accident reports really didn't put blame on anybody. Um, they said a crankshaft could break at any moment. Numerous had broken already throughout the, the year. Um, normally they didn't cause any damage. The only thing, reason the accident happened was because it, the crankshaft broke in the place it broke. Um, normally had it broken spread the rail, rail rails wide the train would have come to a stop just off the rails uh, but because of the embankment um, and the curve and everything else um, it was obviously a much more um, horrible accident um, and so you know it was it was news it was big news um, I mean obviously people came from miles around to um, to actually see um, see the accident um so this is another photo um taken i think from the from the newspaper articles i've read i think this was taken on the sunday after the accident um I'm trying to have issues with my light um when obviously the um the accident inspectors and the railway and everything had already taken notes and worked out what what they needed from the accident site and the rail the workers were clearing the site so here they're obviously breaking up um, the remains of one of the the carriages. Um, the suggestion was some parts, things like wheels and stuff, were being um, taken away and reused, uh, where a lot of the just the, the wooden carriages and stuff would be broken away. But you can see, you know, the number of um, 
of people one of the newspaper reports uh puts it in um you know thousands of people visiting um over the weekend after the accident um to see to see the the site and the devastation um and um you know it was such big news that two of the large kind of um newspapers of the time that had um illustrations so that's the london illustrated news and the graphic um both ran um large images the the graphic had a half page i think um well yeah I, I know the graphic had a half page um the london illustrated news had a full double spread now i do have copies of both of those but they're a bit big to kind of get out as i say the, the london illustrated news one is huge um so i have got scans i will put some photos up on the screen as I, as I talk about these but again they show um more of the the site um slightly different angles and things but um as you'll see if you as, from the photos on the screen at the moment um they match up remarkably well with the photos taken of the accident site so um yeah obviously they were um the 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 engravings were done from photos it's interesting that the the two newspapers took very different um very different styles of design of graphic design um so they're very they're very different um uh, but they're interesting and as i say i'll, I'll, I'll you, you've obviously been able to see them up on the screen um i'll put some other <coughs> photos up as well uh, i may put um copies of those photos up um as well given the issue with the light reflecting off some of the glossier ones um so yeah so i think the reason that the publishers of this included Penniston in the title. Uh, obviously, it had nothing to do with the contents of the of the of the of the text, particularly. I think they were just, you know, people are interested in disasters and misery, um, and this accident was famous. Um, it was, you know, it as I say, it was big news, um, and with twenty twenty four deaths, um, and no one to blame. Penniston kind of got this um, reputation of being a dangerous place to cross the cross the Pennines. Um, so even three years after the accident, obviously, I'm assuming it was still reasonably fresh in, in people's in people's minds um, and probably just using it to, you know, sell more books. Um, I mean, it got me. I bought it from eBay, um, you know, hundreds, hundred and something years later. Um, so it clearly works. But it, I mean, as I say, there's 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 nothing really in here that's specific uh, to Penniston and the accident. Um, I mean, even this drawing, lovely though it is, is completely and utterly um unrelated um it the the loco shown is not anything that was would have ever run through peniston in fact i think looking at the looking at the the illustration i don't even think it's a standard gauge line i think this is a drawing of a um broad gauge great western railway uh, locomotive i think it's um a star class um locomotive um I think there might be one preserved um, in the in the national collection. I'm not sure, um, but they were all withdrawn by 1871, uh, which was well before the the accident date. And as I say, none of them would have ever run through Penniston. It was always a standard gauge, standard gauge line. No, no Great Western trains this far north. Oh well, not in Penniston anyway. Um, so yeah, so again, illustration absolutely nothing, uh, nothing to do with the the book. Um, but as I say, it's it's an interesting artifact of history. It may not have anything directly related to um, to railways, other than the the very short introductory piece I read you. Um, but I think it's an interesting book. As I say, I could find just one brief reference on Google Google Books to it. So I don't know how many of these were printed, how many were sold. I don't know how rare it is. Um, but as a as a piece of kind of local history, I think it's I think it's interesting anyway. Um, as I say, I, I, I wrote a, a long article um, for the Railway Work Life and Death um, project, which includes lots and lots of um, quotes from um, contemporary newspapers um, documenting as many of the kind of eyewitness accounts as I could find of the accident. So if you want to know uh, more about the accident, I'll put a, a link in the in the description. Um, but yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed that. Something rather different than the books we've looked at next time, last time. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching.